Jude was speaking about the, the gospel and message once delivered unto the saints. And he includes two quotations from the book of Enoch. So doesn't that very clearly show us that the book of Enoch was part of the Bible of the Old Testament that the, the, the Hebrews had and secondly, that was available to the church. How else did Jude know it? All Jude had was the Septuagint in Greek. He did not have any manuscripts in Hebrew from Moses' day. And even if there were manuscripts there of some kind of Hebrew, he would have known enough never to have based his doctrines on that manuscript that they did have, which mo most of which de was destroyed in the, in the t temple when it was burnt in AD 70. So it's obvious it, they were circulated around the Septuagint in Greek, firstly amongst Hebrews, secondly amongst the Church of Jesus Christ, and that is history. So now we're going to deal with 2 Peter chapter 2. And we're just going to re uh, relate what Peter says in verse 4. He says, For God did not spare angels when they sinned. You see? It was sin. So what did he do? They're sinning in heaven. The sin came out of heaven, which goes against a lot of theology we've been taught that is quite ignorant for them to have uh, taught, taught it and for us to have received it, really. We receive so much, don't we, in our looking through a glass darkly. And I'm not condemning them or us, but I'm saying the theologians should know better. It says, For God did not spare angels when they sinned. Then he didn't cast them out of heaven. They left heaven, we found from Jude. He cast them down to Tartarus, which is similar to the abyss. It is not identical to hell. So these angels sinned in leaving heaven, their first sin. But before they did that, they would have talked amongst themselves. And as a matter of fact, it is related in the book of Enoch that they were conversing about it and appointed a leader and so forth. Of course they talked about it. You see, things in heaven were not that we have been made to believe. Now, this should not upset us. What upsets us should be, why has the church been quiet about the obvious truth of the book of Enoch and about the obvious truth about these angels? Even Peter's talking about it. Now, there's not much said in the book of Genesis, which we will go into later. And so what does God do? He did not cast them to earth. They went themselves. This is what he did. He cast them there. And maybe that's where their, their uh, center is, their city, if you like. They're in chains of darkness. Evil spirits are full of darkness now, aren't they? Satan is full of darkness, isn't he? To be reserved for judgment. They'll get judgment. They are not judged yet. Except their progeny was judged in the flood. Then he says, he did not spare the ancient world. He's talking about Genesis 6 and for the next few chapters in relation to the flood. But preserved Noah 
a preacher of righteousness. And as we have said before, as it is recorded in 1 Peter chapter 2, chapter 3, Christ preached to those people about the gospel and that always includes judgment. He would have been telling that generation the flood is coming. Well, Noah did. Because Noah was preaching like that because Christ was in him. Christ was not down in hell. Those souls are not in hell. Christ did not go down into hell at all under any circumstances. As far as we know from any scripture, Christ has never been to hell. Of course he would not be in hell. How could he who is the light go into that pit of darkness and evil? He could not. So this is what happened. Noah was so full of Christ that Christ was preaching through him every day of his life. Not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's in us in our spirits, not in our souls. Christ was in the being of Noah. And for Christ to be in the being of Noah, he had to have been different from every other person who had ever been born and who will be born, who would be born. And he had to have been different, certainly, from those angels who descended and became men in form who committed evil with those women. He was different. And the book of Enoch describes the difference as we read before, previously. The beauty of the child, white and red. Now that doesn't mean, uh, you know, blood red. We talk about red Indians. Red Indians aren't particularly red, just a little pinkish, aren't they? Rosy. And maybe Noah looked a little bit like that, but certainly more heavenly, even though he was on earth. He was so beautiful, he was born with long white hair, and the, as the midwife took him out of the womb, took him out, and from his uh, coming out of the womb, he started to praise God. Now, is that extra strange? No. Jesus said to them in his day, because they were complaining, huh, why are you complaining? He was saying, God, even these stones can praise me. Well, if stones can praise him, so can a baby just born out of the womb. Well, the record is that it did. And the record is that he lived with the angels. And I'm not surprised at that because our Old Testament that we're used to says in Genesis 5, I have known this all my life and, and marveled at it, not because I've known it all my life, <laughs> marveled at it because I've heard a preacher say this, that's the hardest thing we can get the believers to do, to walk with God. She said that. Uh, Sister Graves, I never forgot it. We're meant to walk with God. We will never walk with God like Noah. We're in a different generation. We're different people. But the Bible says he walked with God, not God walked with him. And you see, we can't walk with God in a sense. He is walking with us because Christ is in us and the Spirit is in us. Well, as a baby, from there on into childhood to teenage years, somehow or other, he had such a marvellous experience with God that he was walking with him all the time. Most of the time he was with the angels in vision form. Then that prepared him to be capable of being translated. Translated mean he was just taken up as he was. 
Now, to get to heaven in bodily form, the Bible doesn't describe that and I won't even go into it. No conjectures, just facts. He was translated, the only one in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Paul ascended to heaven in vision. He thought maybe he was out of the body, but he wasn't translated. Elijah wasn't translated. Elijah went up in chariots and on the way up, somehow or other, the chariots disappeared. and they, That would have been in vision form, I think. Not real chariots. He went up there and somehow or other, between there and heaven, he was transformed, not translated. Now we speak about the translation of the saints and I'm not sure it's the right word to use. Maybe we should say transformation of the saint's body because they will actually be totally formed again, totally created again. A new body, change in the body. A new creation done by Christ at, at his appearance on everybody is an absolute miracle to happen. Hundreds of millions of people the Bible says, in the twinkling of an eye. That is how great the power of our God is. How great God is. And that's just a glimpse of his greatness. And so going back to Second Peter, it says this, He, with seven others, he brought Noah, the preacher of righteousness, through the world, through the flood, he saved them. He preserved them when he destroyed a world of the ungodly. Then it says, next verse, he also turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. You see the connection between the angels. Here's two accounts, both connected. There is a law in the Old Testament with the word of every two or three witnesses, the witness of every two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And that applies to the Bible, and most Christians know that, and most preachers know that. That's what most believe. You have two instances where the connection is decidedly, absolutely, between one the angels that sin, and two, the, de the homosexuality and the evil sin of Sodom and Gomorrah, Jude and Second Peter. So then it says, the cities were burned into ashes, condemning them to destruction. They were destroyed, destroyed in a second. Now we did see a documentary on television some time ago where astronomers, maybe they were astrologers. I mean, we, uh, we as Christians don't accept astrology. We certainly would not follow it. But in the ancient times, they had astrologers and they certainly had astronomers too. Well, these Americans, I think it was, have discovered records of manuscripts of astronomers way over there around where Saudi Arabia is today who kept records of what was happening in the stars and Jupiter and all those place planets. They knew more about things than we realized they did without our astronomical glasses and so forth. And what happened was According to them, they saw this planet going past and then they saw it descend on a mountain that we know is Switzerland, that the scholars knew, knew was Switzerland, took off the top of the mount that just plumed into the sky, flew in the air at tremendous speed and landed on Sodom and Gomorrah and burnt the cities and the people to ashes. And those cities have just been of late uh, discovered 
by archaeologists at the mouth or near the mouth of the Jordan River as it enters the Dead Sea. And remember how Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt? She looked back because that plume of fire descending on Sodom and Gomorrah also hit part of the Dead Sea and removed a whole heap of salt, according to these scientists. And so because she looked back, whether it was a specific act of God or because she was facing that way, I'm not sure she was turned into a pillar of salt. See, that's why she was told not to look back. And we preachers have not known that fact. I've heard sermons and I've probably alluded to myself, you don't look back. You don't look back to the world that you came from. It had nothing to do with it. It had to do with the fact that there was going to be salt there and somehow or other, some wind would affect them. That's what it would appear. So continuing on with what we find in, in 2 Peter 2, it does say this in verse 9. The Lord knows how to deliver the godly from temptation and how to hold the wicked for their punishment on the day of judgment. We're dealing with serious matters. Serious matters. This is what the Lord is doing right now. He's in preparation while he's still delivering the godly. He's in preparation or in mind or indeed, I'm not sure, to deliver the godly at the coming of the Lord. But while we're here on earth to deliver the godly from temptation and how to hold the wicked for their punishment on the day of judgment which is to come. Then it says, verse 10, especially those who follow the flesh in a desire of corruption and have no respect for authority. Now this is a, an obscure phrase there according to scholars. Then it says, daring and in self-will, they are not afraid to speak evil of the glorious ones. Well, now I have read ages ago, one commentator says this was God, the Father and the Son. It's amazing this person said that because you know what's written in the book of Enoch? God is speaking as the Father and he says, I and my son. You don't even get that in our Old Testament. What you do get in our Old Testament is in the book of Proverbs about uh, how they converse together and so forth. And those who know their Bibles recognize that wisdom is the word of God and that wisdom and the Father and God in heaven were conferring in eternity. But nobody ever says in the Old Testament we have that God declares there is a son. But it says so in the book of Enoch. Now the book of Enoch is that important because it holds the faith of the saints in a great measure that is totally confirmed by the rest of the Bible that we have. All over the place there are confirmations but there are many parts of Enoch that are strange. There are many parts of Exodus that are strange. They're just not strange because we're used to it. You read the, the book of Ezekiel. Now because it's strange in appearance, because uh, there are explanations for it, we, we don't see it as particularly strange, but it is very strange. Something on four wheels, Fire representing God, turning and spinning. Very strange indeed, the first few chapters. And what does Ezekiel say? I saw the heavens open. He's describing something that was heavenly. Now, 
That does not mean to say there were actual wheels up there. I don't really know. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. So don't think it's strange when there are strange parts of the book of Enoch. There are strange parts, very strange parts in the book of Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Look at things God did with the children of Israel. Strange. Fancy getting the priests and their wives and children and letting the earth consume them with fire? We don't think it's strange because we've heard about it or read it. Bit by bit, we read the Bible. So when we come to the book of Enoch, we should not feel it is strange. 